Ocean Cleanup has reached a critical milestone in the development of their ocean cleaning technology and recently announced that the nonprofit had reached proof of technology with the Ocean Cleanup System 2 during a recent press event held in Victoria, Canada. The Ocean Cleanup showed off their latest catch of over 9,000 kilograms of plastic waste collected in a single haul, dumping it out in dramatic fashion for all the world to see. CEO Boyan Slat took to the stage in Victoria Harbor, yeah. joined by members of the Ocean Cleanup team, to announce that the cleanup would begin the very next day, as they begin to deploy teams and ocean cleanup systems to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is located hundreds of miles offshore in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, this is a day you know, we've all been looking forward to for, for all these years, uh, that I've personally been looking forward to for the past 10 years. We've completed the testing, you know, working system, proof of technology, and that we're now going out uh, tomorrow to actually go and, and harvest, uh, harvest trash. System 2, called Jenny, named after the famous character in the film Forrest Gump, differs from its predecessor System 1, aka Wilson, also named after a character from a different Tom Hanks movie. Wilson! in that it's being towed at a very slow speed, about 1.5 knots, by two large vessels through the ocean, catching floating ocean plastic along the way. The barrier extends about three meters below the surface and is completely open in the center, allowing for fish to escape by simply swimming down below the barrier. As water flows through the system, the plastic gets pushed to the center which acts like a collection area, which the ocean cleanup calls the retention zone. After a period of time, the vessels connect both ends of the giant loop to one ship, while the other ocean cleanup vessel maneuvers to the retention zone and pulls in the net, collecting and later sorting the plastic pollution before bringing it back to shore to be processed into pelletized plastic for manufacturing recycled goods. In October of 2020, the Ocean Cleanup unveiled their high-end sunglasses, designed in California by Yves Behar and crafted in Italy by one of the leading Italian eyewear manufacturing companies, Safilo. The sunglasses frames are made out of reclaimed pelletized ocean plastic, which was collected by System 1 B as a means to raise money for future cleanups and to prove to the world that you can make something new out of the tons of plastic pollution the nonprofit plans to pull out of the Pacific. So this whole idea of, of making this cleanup circular and turning the catch into something usable and using that to actually continue the, the, the funding of the continued cleanup. Yeah, that has really been the vision since the very first day. As we were developing the cleanup technology, uh, we have also been having a team here working really around the clock to work on ways to turn this material into actually something great, you know, something that people want to have and that is actually able to, to then fund the cleanup. Each pair of sunglasses has a QR code, which you can scan to see exactly where in the ocean your sunglasses came from, along with videos and ocean cleanup data. Boyan Slat made clear in a series of recent tweets that the Ocean Cleanup has no plans to get into the manufacturing of products business with plastic collected from System 2, and that the sunglasses were simply meant to be a proof of concept showing that companies can, and I quote, turn our trash into something truly valuable, end quote. Talk about closing the loop. They are literally closing the loop. Boyan Slat's original idea for System 1 was an autonomous cleaning system that used the ocean's currents and winds to propel it through the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. An autonomous system would save money on staffing a crew, fuel costs, and be able to work day and night 24-7. This concept proved to be ineffective during early testing. System 1 was successful in catching plastic, but the plastic would easily escape because the smaller floating plastic pieces would sometimes travel faster than System 1 and would simply float away from the structure. But Boyan's plans for an autonomous cleaning system are not dead yet. System 2 is now crewed with multiple ships and crew members who all have a specific role in collecting, sorting, and recycling the plastic waste. Boyan Slat has big plans for the Pacific Garbage Patch and has said that he has plans to deploy multiple units to the patch simultaneously while beginning development of System 3 as soon as possible. Ultimately, you know, if we just collect this amount of plastic 3,000 times, 
yeah, we're, the garbage patch will be gone, and uh, we'll just exist in the in the history books. You know, we can do this if we just make the system a bit bigger, and we have ten of them out there. We can clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. System 3 will be three times larger than System 2, spanning 2.5 kilometers or one and a half miles across, increasing its ability to collect more plastic. The Ocean Cleanup has also promised to continue their environmental monitoring and data collection programs, with the sensors and wildlife monitoring devices mounted to the cleanup systems. And they have pledged to go carbon neutral by offsetting their fuel consumption and are experimenting with low carbon emission fuels for the fleet of support vessels. With the success of System 2, System 3 will become the blueprint for producing a fleet of ocean cleaning systems in the future. Currently, the goal is to deploy 10 ocean cleanup systems every five years in hopes of greatly reducing the amount of plastic floating in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is, let's not forget, the size of Texas, which is a massive state. I should know, I was born in Houston, Texas. I've driven across Texas a few times by car, and it is a massive area to cover. The ocean cleanup systems are not the only tools in the tool shed for the ocean cleanup team. The ocean cleanup has been hard at work deploying updated river interceptors all over the world in an attempt to stop the flow of plastic pollution in the mouths of rivers. So where is all this plastic coming from? Well, the answer, it turns out, is rivers. Rivers are like the arteries that carry the trash from land to sea. When it rains, plastic washes from streets to creek to river to ocean. Boyan Slat acknowledges that stopping plastic pollution at the source is paramount in curbing the amount of plastic pollution that enters the oceans every year. It will take education and major changes in single-use plastic products and packaging and a major shift in our behavior and recycling practices to completely rid the world of this plastic pollution crisis. It's really hard to imagine that all that stuff just used to float out there in the middle of the ocean, 2,000 kilometers offshore. It's, uh, it still would have floated out there you know, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, probably even 100 years from now. This stuff is so persistent and that's of course precisely the reason why we have to go and clean it up. So if you like this video, subscribe to CNET's YouTube channel and ring that bell for more videos like this one. And make sure to check out the description for more information on the ocean cleanup and past coverage that we've done. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>